The first thing I want to do is remove the wheel, 21 millimeter socket, take off all five of your lug nuts. And now remove the wheel. Now with the 10 millimeter, I want to loosen up the two slider pin bolts, which bolt the caliper onto the axle here. Um, there's, no, there's no bracket on this one. So 10 millimeter socket, break these free, and then we'll remove them all the way. Take these out, set them aside, inspect them. If they're rotted or in bad condition, don't reuse them. Obviously you need to replace them. These are good though. Now use a pry bar, go from the top, flip the caliper over, take it off. I want to take off the rotor next in order to help clean up the uh, anti-rattle clips where they sit. Okay, it looks like my parking brake needs to be de-adjusted because it won't let go of the shoes. So let me show you how to do that. At the bottom right here, you'll see this little cap, which if you remove it, it gives you an access hole to the adjuster for the parking brake shoes. Sometimes you might need a little pry bar to, or screwdriver to pop this out. Don't break it because you definitely want to reuse this, otherwise water gets in there and then you get rust on your parking brake shoes. But pop this off, there we go. And right behind here, you'll see this little star adjuster wheel. You can twist this and what this will do is it'll contract the shoes and it will release the rotor. Hopefully it's not seized up. Mine is a little rusty, so we'll definitely have to clean this one up and uh, lubricate it, but it spins, so that's good. Uh, the direction that you need to turn it in will depend by uh, application. Sometimes you have to twist it down, sometimes you have to twist it up, and also depending on how it was installed last. Looks like for me, twisting it down releases the rotor. Okay, that's perfect. Now I can get the rotor off of here. I don't want to breathe in any of this brake dust that's stuck in here, so I'm going to take some brake parts cleaner. I'm going to spray down this whole parking brake shoe area and get rid of any dust that might be floating around in here. That way, as I work, I don't breathe it in. And also, this helps clean it all up. Cleaning this up, this one's not too bad, but I do want to remove the surface rust here, and I'm going to use a sanding disc. At this point, you could use a wire brush, but it would take a little bit longer than a sanding disc. Don't take off too much material, though. This is your axle shaft. <laughs> In between the lug studs here, I'm going to use a wire brush. Clean it up with brake parts cleaner. Next, I want to put some anti-seize all over this hub here where we cleaned up. That way it doesn't rust again, or at least prevents most of the rust. And I'm just going to put a thin layer on. If you have the spray anti-seize, not the brushed kind, be careful not to get it on your parking brake shoes. You don't want to contaminate them. If you do, uh, you'd want to use some brake parts cleaner and clean them off nicely. I'm going to also focus on the center area right here where the rotor actually sits. A lot of times if it will freeze, it'll actually freeze on right at that ring, right in the middle. So I'm going to also coat the rest of the surface. and. You don't want to use too much either, because if you use too much, it'll squish, come out, get on the braking surface or on the uh, surface for the parking brake shoes, and then you have issues. So try not to use too much. Nice thin layer will do the trick. Next, I want to remove this differential cover. Because it's leaky, the gasket is, I'm going to scrape the dirt off while it's still attached. That way I get the majority of it off and lessen the possibility of it getting inside the differential for whatever reason. And also I want to try and get these bolts a little cleaner so my socket can grip them better. When you remove this bolt over here that has this tag, make sure you 
keep the tag and put it back where it belongs. It's important as uh, information about the differential here. And now with the collection bucket underneath, I'm gonna go around and remove all of these 13 millimeter headed bolts. I'm gonna start at the top, work my way towards the bottom. Another tag up top. I'm actually gonna start a couple of these bolts back in just so the, the uh, cover doesn't come flying off when it does break free. And I'm gonna get these close, not bottomed out, because I want this to come off, but I don't want it to fall down. Of course, I have my collection bucket ready. Now I'm gonna find a little spot to pry and hopefully get underneath there. Take this bolt completely out at this point. Now we're making progress. That one out as well. And there you have it. Take this cover off. Let this all drain. Next, looking at the differential here, I'm gonna go ahead and spin it. Obviously the truck has to be neutral and you wanna reach this bolt right here. This is a 3 8 headed bolt. Don't try to use a 10 millimeter on it because it'll be too large and a nine millimeter won't fit because it'll be too small. And if you end up stripping this bolt out, it's not gonna be fun. So you use a 3 8 wrench. Go ahead and break this free and just drive it all the way out. Slide this out completely, set it aside safely. At this point, I'm gonna take the whole differential and turn it to face this pin down so I can see through this opening, make sure this doesn't fall out. Stop right about here. This pin is facing down. Make sure it doesn't fall out by itself. Stick your hand on the back side of here and push it through. Slide it down. Watch out because it's slippery. At this point, you don't want to spin each individual axle shaft by itself because you risk shooting out um, these spider gears in here. So I'm going to take this differential and spin the whole thing so that I can have access in there to remove the C-clips so we can take out the axle shafts. Now on the end of the axle where the rotor goes on, go ahead and push it in and that should expose the C-clip here, which you can easily remove with a magnet. If the axle doesn't push in far enough, I'll show you in a second why that would be, but um, for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this with a magnet, like I said, set this aside safely. So you can see right here, this is where the parking brake shoes go. And if the lug stud is positioned right here, not to the side of it, then it will actually hit up against this piece and will not allow the axle shaft to push in far enough. So as you can see right now, if I push it, this piece slides in between the two studs and actually allows it to go just far enough for you to remove that C-clip. So if your lug stud stops here, just go ahead and slightly uh, very gently, slowly spin this. Pay attention so that none of those gears move or uh, potentially come out of their spot. And at this point, we can pull the axle shaft right out. You'll notice the parking brake shoes are missing. They are off for a different reason. You do not have to remove them for this procedure. When you pull it out, support it. It is heavy. There we go. There are multiple ways to remove this seal. I'm gonna just do it with a pry bar, stick it in here and pop it out. There we go. Sometimes there's fluid coming out of here as you remove this, so watch out for that. Next, I'm gonna install my seal and on the back side, I applied some petroleum jelly around this spring there. This is going to prevent it from popping out as I install it. It's important because that's what keeps the pressure tight on this seal that uh, seals up the axle. And the reason you wanna use petroleum jelly, not something else, is because it's petroleum based, just like the oil that's in the differential. So over time, it will just basically dissipate into the oil, not gonna cause any harm. I'm gonna take my seal installer, center up my seal. I'm gonna to try to hold this as flush as possible. Give it a couple taps to start it. All right, it's going in, but it is going a little bit crooked, so I wanna correct that. I'm gonna go over to the side here and tap it just on this one side. 
Okay, that seems to have fixed it. Drive it in the rest of the way. Make sure you're only pressing on this outer lip with your seal installer, not anywhere else, otherwise it'll be damaged. And you'll hear an audible difference once it bottoms out. It did, but I'm going to give it a couple more hits just to be safe. Okay, that's it. It's installed, fully bottomed out. Now let's get the axle shaft in. Next, I want to put a rag over the differential here so that I don't get any debris falling inside of it. And then I want to clean up this whole surface so that I can get the uh, new gasket sealing properly. I'm going to use a razor blade, scrape off all the old gasket maker. I recommend using a razor blade because it will not gouge the surface like a screwdriver, or a pry bar, or even sandpaper. Um, sandpaper, if you do it by hand, if you do it on a sanding block, it'll work, but it's just going to get clogged up with this. So if you do it by hand, you could actually create divots. So the razor blade is best. Now that this all cleaned up, I'm going to go ahead and wipe it off with some brake parts cleaner. That way I can ensure the surface is degreased, nice and clean, free of any debris. Slide the axle shaft in. Watch out for your seal. You don't want to damage it in the installation process. So support the axle as you slide it in the best you can. Once you get to right about here, it won't be possible to support it anymore, but push, pull down on the hub part so you can lift the other end and spin at the same time. That's going to line up all the splines back there. And once it lines up, it'll slide right in and make sure that you turn it in whichever direction is needed in order to um, push it in all the way. See, so we can get that C-clip in there. Now grab your C-clip and slide it down in. Make sure it presses down all the way and then pull the axle shaft out that locks it in place. While we're here, I'm going to put this pin in which locks everything together and it only goes in one way because the hole for the bolt is only on one side. So slide it up. It doesn't matter which direction it faces as long as the bolt hole's on the bottom. Slide it up gently. Hopefully your gears didn't move in there. Try to have it as lined up as possible with the bolt hole that goes through here. Pushed it too far. All right, slide the bolt in. There we go. Slide the bolt through. I put a little bit of blue thread locker on the threads. I clean them up with brake parts cleaner first. I recommend it. You don't have to, but I recommend it. Now I'm just going to drive this bolt in all the way. All right, let's snug it up. Make sure it's nice and tight. There we go. Don't over tighten it. Just bottom it out and snug it. I'm going to give this surface one last wipe with the brake parts cleaner since it's been open for a little bit. And then we can put the gasket on as well as the cover for the differential. It's important to have the surface as clean as possible, that way you have no leaks. Take your differential cover. If you have a magnet on there, make sure you put it back. Put it on the, the lower side. You want it sitting right about here so it can collect the debris. Don't put it right next to the gear. You don't want it to be so close that it gets caught by the gear. but you know, over here somewhere. So in my case, if the cover sits like this, I'll be putting it right around here on the back side. Right there, that should be perfect. And your gasket, line that up to make sure it's going or facing the right direction because it won't line up both ways. If you flip it over and you line up some of the holes, other ones will be completely off. So it goes this way and put the cover over it. I'm gonna start in the top bolt here so it can be held in place and I can let go. So now it's held in place. I'm going to start some more bolts in. This one had a tag on it, so I'm not going to put that one in yet. And this next one also had a tag, so I'm going to wait. I'm going to put all of the bolts in and then put the two in with the tag. Then we'll bottom those out and torque them all. So remember which tag goes where. I know for me, this rustier one went on top and then there's another tag that goes right over here. Make sure you face it the right direction so it can actually be red. Okay, careful when you tighten these because the tags are most likely going to want to rip out as you tighten the bolt. So just something to keep in mind. Let's snug this up. It doesn't matter which order you go and I'm just going to go across so I can actually seat this whole thing properly.
All right, now I'm just going to go around by hand, and make sure they're all nice and tight. Yeah, that's what I was talking about when I said they want to bend. You have to kind of anticipate where it's going to want to land once you're done tightening. As you can see, after they bottom out, I'm just basically going a quarter of a turn. Okay, they're all tight. Let's fill it up. Now I want to fill up the differential on the front side of it where the drive shaft goes in. You'll see this 3 8 drive plug. So grab your 3 8 drive tool and let's remove it. Sometimes these are super stuck. There we go. All right, take this out. And this differential takes just about three quarts of 75W140 gear oil. And in my case, this is a limited slip, so I need to either have the limited slip additive built into the oil or add it separately. Grab your fluid and start pouring it in. The way you know when to stop is when it starts coming out of the fill plug. Okay, we've got fluid dripping out of here. That means it's up at this level at the fill plug, so we can cap it off now. Let's wipe off some of the drippage here, make sure the threads are clean. And I cleaned up my fill plug, put some Teflon tape on it. I'm gonna start it back into the threads here. I'll snug it up with a ratchet. And when you tighten this, you don't have to go for extra tight. You just make it snug and it should bottom out and just seal up. So right here, it feels like I could keep going, but it's tight. So I'm going to stop. Slide on your rotor. If it doesn't fit, the parking brake shoes most likely shifted. So just center them up a little bit. Clean off this surface as well. In order to properly adjust the parking brake shoes, I'm going to put two lug nuts on and bottom them out. Just make them snug so the rotor can sit flush up against the axle here. This will get you the most accurate uh, tightness of the parking brake shoes. And before I go to do anything else, I'm going to come right back here with a little pry bar and I'm going to pull on the parking brake lever just like that. What this is going to do is it's going to move the shoes around and center them up. Otherwise, if they're not centered, one side might be touching before the other and you'll get an inaccurate um, measurement of how tight how far out you should adjust them. So now that that's done, let's spin these and it'll be hard to tell, um, especially because the other wheel is going to want to spin and I'm in neutral, but you still have to overcome the force of the drivetrain. And as you can see, you can have a little bit of slop in the differential and it'll um, move a little bit, but you really need to turn it and listen for it. What you want to do on parking brake shoes like this is you want to hear them just barely touch. You don't want them to drag at all, not like drum brakes. You just want them to just barely touch and that's how you know that it's properly adjusted. I can hear something very little, so I'm going to turn the adjuster uh, to expand the shoes a little bit and hopefully that does the trick for me. Another thing you can do is go to the other side, disassemble it just so that I can have noise only coming from here. I don't want to confuse any dragging noise with uh, noise coming from the other side. All right, so I have the other side apart, the rotor's off. I'm going to spin this and just listen for it. See how you can hear them touch at all times. Now keep in mind the adjuster is completely de-adjusted. It's bottomed out. You cannot de-adjust them anymore and the shoes are slightly making contact with the rotor. Another way to test this is I'm going to pull on the e-brake lever back here while I spin and the rotor should stop turning. Okay, right there. Parking brake is being applied. So everything is just fine. That's exactly how you want it to be. 
Um, turns out I didn't have to do any adjustment, so that's perfect. Let's take these lug nuts off and continue. Once you're happy with your adjustment for the parking brake, don't forget to put this little cap back on here. I put a little bit of grease on it just so it can seal up properly. Push it in all the way. There we go. Since I replaced the axle bearing on that side, I have to tip the differential. If you're on the ground, you can easily just do this by jacking up this side. I'm on a lift and the wheels are still off. So what I'm gonna do is just use a pull jack, raise this side up and that side will naturally want to tip down. This is going to push the fluid all the way to that side. Well, not all the way, but it's gonna push fluid into that bearing and we'll lubricate it and prime it so that it doesn't roll dry for the first few miles. So I'm just gonna leave it like this for about 10 minutes, let the fluid roll down into that bearing lubricate it, and then we can take this off and put the wheels on. All right, it's been about 10, 15 minutes, so I'm gonna lift this down, and then we'll put the wheels back on. Let's get the wheel on. Start on all five of your lug nuts, if you have five, and then torque them to 150 foot-pounds. If you have seven, start all seven, and then torque them to 100 foot-pounds. Okay, take it for a road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.